welcome to the Avocado Knits vlog video cast. I'm Ava, the host. This is a YouTube channel about knitting and crocheting and spinning and all those yarny crafty things. I guess we'll just get started with what I'm wearing. No, we will get started with me telling you my Instagram handle. It is at avadorable underscore knits, like adorable, but with A-V before it, because my name is Ava. Cool. Yeah, I'm not going to share my Ravelry because I have not been posting anything on Ravelry, so I feel like it's kind of pointless. It won't benefit anybody if they want current information about my projects, so... Um, anyway, so what I'm wearing, this is my Mazzy cardigan by Elizabeth Smith. It is a raglan bottom-up cardigan and the band has this like one by one cable on every other rib and it also has pockets. I would stand up and show you the pockets but I'm wearing pajama pants and I want to keep up the illusion of professionalism even though I just told you I'm wearing pajama pants. <laughs> But yeah, so I knit this back in May, eight, I know, April, I think April. The yarn is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes, worsted in the current colorway. Um, I really like this cardigan, but it didn't turn out how I wanted it to. And I, it's not the fault of the pattern. My stitch gauge was bang on, it was completely right. Um, I made like one of the smaller sizes because um, a, like a year or two, or, no it was just a year ago, I knit a different like raglan cardigan and it turned out way too big. So for this one, instead of like using the recommended ease, I, I made it have zero ease and somehow it's still too big and I figured out why. It is because of my row gauge. <laughs> so if you look at the armpits and now that I'm looking at it like in detail it's really not that bad also I messed up my decreases here but we're just gonna ignore that um, there's a lot of bulk even though this is supposed to have zero ease and obviously it's not gonna be like right up to my armpit but I think it's because I have a very loose row gauge so when we got to the decreases they were longer than they should have been and also like the collar is a bit bulky but I think it's just because of the way I'm sitting right now it's not normally like that um, I still really like it it's really good as like almost like a dressing gown that I just wear around the house I haven't had a chance to wear it out much because of COVID but I just I think I wanted something that I would wear out all the time and I don't think that's this I knit it to replace a cardigan that I had that was store-bought and made out of acrylic and completely falling apart. And they do kind of fulfill the same role. They don't look the same at all though. They're, they're both this color, like this is the exact color it was. And originally I was going to make, I forget which pom-pom it was, but it was the moon issue. No it wasn't. It was the one before the moon issue. Yeah, those are the only two issues I have. Not because I don't like pom-pom. I just I don't buy books unless there's like a lot of patterns in them that I'm gonna make. So I was gonna make that but I So it first of all it was in pieces and I've never converted a pattern from being in pieces to all in one the second thing is the gate the gauge was for a DK weight yarn, and this is a worsted weight yarn. It is a light worsted, so it'd be pretty easy to get the gauge on, but I, it was heavily cabled and textured, and I wasn't sure about measuring my gauge. And it was just gonna be a lot of effort. And then it also had, like by design, the giant armpits, and it just wasn't gonna work out. I do wanna make that at some point, I just don't, feel comfortable seeming, but I feel like now I could make it all in one, but at the time it was like the first, like the start of COVID and I was like, no, I'm just, I just want a basic pattern that I just follow. 
I think I did, no, I didn't alter the sleeves for this. I normally alter the sleeves, but I decided that if they were too long, I would just do like this. And they're not that long, so I'm pretty happy with them. Most of the time I have to increase the decrease rate on my sleeves so that they're not like dangling. <laughs> so yeah, and the yarn, I've knit several sweaters out of this yarn. And I always find it to be like really soft and next to skin, but this colorway is a bit more scratchy. It is not scratchy to the point where I can't wear it because I have a pretty high tolerance for that, but it is scratchy to the point that my boyfriend does not want to touch it. So the other, I think the other colorways I had were heathered and maybe having the mixture of the dark and light fiber makes it softer. I don't know. I really don't know. It doesn't bother me. So that's what I'm wearing. That was a lot of time on that, but I made that during my hiatus. So that was just kind of like my FO piece on this. Now let's move on to finished objects. So first, kind of a boring one, and I have a leaf on this and hair. These are socks for my stepmom. I haven't washed them yet. They're gonna be a Christmas gift. I really like this yarn and I did a fish lips kiss heel because that's sort of my go-to heel for other people because I, I like that I don't have to switch to longer circular needles to do it. That's pretty much the only reason why. The yarn is Knit Picks Stroll Hand Painted in the Borealis colorway. That colorway has been discontinued, but they have similar colorways if you want something with this kind of vibe, including one that I think is called Aurora, Aurora Borealis. That one's a bit more greeny, but it's like still a similar vibe. These are a gift and there's not much else to say. I think I did 60 stitches and a one by one twisted rib and these were top uh, cuff down. That's all there is to them. And then my other finished object is this beast. Whew. Like, look at that. That is so big. Oh, I'm so happy with it. This is my, I'm calling it my Vampire Vibes Vertices Unite. I knit it out of, so I dyed the yarn, but the seller that sells the bear yarn is called Rooster Yarns and they're on Etsy. It is a really nice base though. It's like 100% superwash merino. It's really soft. It's perfect for this, this shawl. I did a slight modification in terms of gauge. So I wanted the big shawl, but I didn't want to do the knitting for the big shawl. So I used DK weight yarn instead and uh, went up a few needle sizes just so the the fabric would be drapey and not like scrunched up. When I, when I was knitting it, I was worried that I needed to go up more needle sizes, but I decided to just leave it. And now that I've blocked it, I'm very happy with that decision because it's very, very drapey now. It wasn't as drapey while I was knitting it. This pattern was a delight to knit. I was a little intimidated by the modular thing because I, I feel like I'm bad at picking up stitches, but the way that the, I'm not going to give away too much, but the way that the edges are done, it makes it a lot easier to pick up the stitches. So this big red and burgundy section was the only one where I was like, it's a bit of a slog. But the rest of the sections were super quick and super fun. Even the I-cord bind off wasn't bad. Um, and so the five colors I used were like a red and a burgundy and this like light gray with pink undertones, which I raved about last episode. And then this black-ish and then this like speckled sort of blood spatter speckle color. I haven't photographed this yet. I'm planning on doing that either today or tomorrow, depending on when my photographer is available. Photographer being my boyfriend. I got, I splurged. It wasn't, it was really cheap. 
I splurged a little bit on some makeup because Morphe was having a giant Black Friday sale. And I, I also like my old makeup has seen better days. So I got like a palette with which I could do like a smoky eye and I kind of want to go for like a creepy vampire-y vibe for the photo. I've never really done anything like that. Usually I just like stand and take a picture. The heart wants what the heart wants and I want, I want to do something a little more creative. So hopefully I can make that happen. I'm not good at makeup. I'm not wearing any makeup right now. But you know, there's lots of tutorials on YouTube. I can figure it out. So yeah, that's that finished object. And those are all my finished objects. And I have a ton of whips that I, most of them are new cast-ons. So first I'm gonna go over my blanket stuff. So my goal was to finish all of my current whips before my birthday which is December 1st and then I could start like Christmas advent things on my birthday and that would make me happy but I finished my like current whips early so I needed something to do in the meantime so I pulled out my blankets um this is not a knitting bag it's like my stepmom bought some stuff from White House Black Market and a I guess she bought enough to get a reward or something so she got this bag she's like I'm not gonna use this bag so she gave it to me and it's my blanket bag now so apparently I'm in the middle of a row I good job me this is my bits and bobs blanket by Kay Jones of the bakery bears and I started this it must have been like May because I, so before the blanket that I was working on was, it was by the Sweater Collective and it was like a rectangle that you make out of half triangles and you have, and the tri half triangles come together and make squares. But one of the, one of the triangles is like a neutral color and then the other triangle is like, you know, your mini skein or whatever that you're using. And I really liked how it looked. The issue is that there were like six different potential triangles you could do and you had to figure out which triangle you're doing based on like the orientation of the blanket. And I am left-handed, so anything regarding orientation and what direction to do things, I have to read it backwards. So I kept on getting mixed up. <laughs> and choosing the wrong triangle because I would like work on it for a bit and then not look at it for a while and then come back to it and then I would forget like how the triangles worked and it was just not fun it was it was only stressful I always had to rip back and like the triangles I could get like one or two of them done in a tv show but what would end up happening is I would spend an entire episode of the tv show that I'm watching trying to figure out which triangle I'm on trying different triangles and then having to rip it out and it shouldn't have been that complicated I just I'm not like my brain just goes away when I'm like watching tv and knitting so that was just too much for me it was not fun it's not a problem with the pattern. It's a problem with me being stupid. <laughs> so I wanted something simpler. And my neutral color is um, Knit Picks palette in the Asphalt Heather colorway. And then I am just striping mini skeins. Um, and I am cool with having like uneven rows and stuff. If I had known that this is the blanket I was going to do, I probably wouldn't have picked this for my neutral, but I still think it looks really cool. And some of my, like, very first hand spun is in this, so you, like, this, like, lumpy bit here is some of it, and then I also have some of it up here. So that's fun, because I didn't know what I was going to do with that, but it works really well in this blanket. It's a very simple pattern, very easy to memorize. Um, is there anything else to say about it? Not really. Um, well, before two weeks ago, I was here. 
so I got through probably like two inches so that's not bad um, I wasn't working on it monogamously or anything and then I have actually two scrappy projects because well when I make I I'm I have small feet so when I make socks I have a lot of leftovers so I have a lot of different I'm trying to use them in a bunch of different ways so because I don't I don't feel like making like a shorty pair of socks or anything so what I do is if I have a lot I will knit baby hats until I get to like around 10 grams it will never like be exactly 10 grams just because you know and then uh, I'll make a granny square so here's one of them this is not one that I made in the this is so bright oh my god <laughs> make a granny square and then with the leftovers after the granny square I put it in my bits and bobs blanket so I'm trying to find the granny squares I made this week or in the past two weeks. I made this one. This is one of my favorite ones. I forget what the name of the colorway is, but this is from the Harry Potter third book advent calendar that Dragon Horde Yarns and Yarn Cafe Creations did together. They're a mother-daughter duo. That's a really good one. This one's also from that and it's another one I did this week. I'm trying to like make it not look ridiculous. And I can't remember which other ones I did this week. So I know I did more than two, but can't find them. That's okay. You get the idea. I worked on some granny squares. And yeah. Oh, I also, I forgot to put this in the show notes, but I made a swatch. Here's my swatch. I know it's really short. <laughs> So I am planning on starting a sweater soonish. I think I'm gonna wait until Advent stuff is over. And I know I'm, I keep referring to that and I haven't talked about it yet, but. Um, so I swatched, I usually don't swatch, <laughs> or I, do, I would say 50% of the time I swatch. I did for this because, so the sweater I'm making is the Isbra sweater, I know I pronounced that wrong, by Skandier Knits. It is a color work yoke. With that sweater, so the yarn that she did it in is uh, Rama Phenol PT2, I think. And that one is like fing heavy fingering bordering on sport. And the yarn I got was Holst Noble, which is 95% cashmere, 95% geelong, 5% cashmere. It is not 95% cashmere. <laughs> It is a very affordable, luxury-ish yarn. So, and I think most people have heard of Whole Super Soft and it's kind of similar, but softer, but it's similar in that it has the spinning oil. So the reason why I swatched was, I'm, I was pretty sure I would get the right stitch gauge because Ellie is a tight knitter and I'm like kind of a normal, normal average knitter in terms of my stitch gauge. But I was worried that with the thinner yarn, it's like borders on a lace. It's a light fingering bordering on lace. It would be too open. So I wanted to swatch and watch, wash it to see. And I definitely think that's too open. So you can see like my fingers poking out. So I did this in the original like recommended needle size. <laughs> So I did get, but I did get the right stitch gauge. So my plan is to go down a needle size and knit a larger size and not doing another swatch. <laughs> I was kind of between the first and second size. So I'm just gonna make the third size. I'm going to, I think that'll work out well because her row gauge tends to be short and my row gauge tends to be long. So if I used her needle size, I pro like the yoke would probably like come down really far. So I think this is a good idea. And I'm not all that fussed about if I if I was like really concerned about the ease and stuff, I would uh I would swatch again, but I'm not I like there's like a large range of ease that I find acceptable for this sweater. So I'm not all that concerned. I was more concerned about the fabric, which is why I swatched. I tend to swatch if the 
ease matters to me. Like if I want a very specific amount of ease or if I need to try a new technique and I don't, I need to make sure it works with the yarn that I'm using or something. Or if I'm concerned about the fabric, which in this case was I'm concerned about the fabric. So that's when I swatch. Um, most things I can, I've learned what my gauge is for different yarns. I, I repeat, I use the same yarns a lot. Like I use Knit Picks Wool of the Andes for lots of stuff. So, oh, and I forget what the colors are. I'll tell you when I start it. It's not that important right now. <laughs> next whip. Oh, wow. We're very, we're taking a while. <laughs> my next whip is in my Katie did. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. I thought it was Katie, like the name did bags, like Katie did them, but I think it's the bug. And I don't know how to pronounce that. Is it Katie did? Katie did? I don't know. Anyway, so this is my favorite bag. It's by Katie, Katie did bags. And it has like tarot spooky things on it. Very, very holiday appropriate. The yarn is out of some out of an advent calendar. So if you have the Holly Press Fibers Lord of the Rings advent calendar and you have not reached day six, close your eyes. The actual project is only up until day three. So if that's fine, you can look. Um, so here's what I have. I really like it. So I had a bit of a mini emergency, but it has since been resolved. Uh, the pattern I'm doing is the Adventuring Wrap by Amba O'Brien. It is a, you knit it like wide. So this is gonna be a lot wider than this. It's just scrunched up on the needles. And it's like basically just garter and eyelets. Um, and then you can choose to have fringe or not. I will choose to have fringe. The story behind this is I had never seen or read The Lord of the Rings. I'd read The Hobbit. I had tried watching it once, but I fell asleep. I don't think I fell asleep because it was a bad movie. I think I was just tired. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know, the beginning with Hobbits and stuff is kind of soothing. Not the beginning beginning, because the stuff about the ring is creepy, but you know. The stuff with Bilbo Baggins and the party and everything, pretty soothing. So I fell asleep. But I came back to it with my boyfriend in June, which was about when like advent calendars were happening. And I kept on like having dreams about it. Like I kept dreaming that I was a hobbit and I had to help, like I had to help Frodo get the ring to Mordor. I guess it really imprinted on my mind. So I wanted to get, I was just like, has anyone made a Lord of the Rings advent calendar? And I looked and Holly Press Fibers did have one. And I looked at her yarn and I thought it was really pretty. So I was like, I'll just get this. And my plan with the wrap pattern was that I would, I picked that pattern cause I decided it was the one that to me would look the best with the yarns in a random order. Most of the time when I do advent projects, I like open all of them and then the week after Christmas, I plan the project and I like try to put them in an order where they look good together, which is difficult because a lot of times the colors are like not specifically meant to look good together. Like they, they follow a theme, but they, I don't know. Cause I don't, I don't want to just put them in my like blankets. I want to have a pattern that shows off all the yarns. Um, so I, but this year I wanted to do it sort of during Advent. I knew I wanted to get like one done every day, but since I'm doing another Advent project, it's not going to happen, but I am going on a really long road trip. So I think I'll catch up. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. So I, I picked a pattern that I thought would look fine with the colors not being in an order that looks good. And I also, I picked it because it looks like something a hobbit would wear, like if it had fringe. And I really identify with hobbits. <laughs> 
So, yeah, I thought, like, this, like, randomly colored thing with fringe, like, would look like something a hobbit would wear. But it turns out that the colors go in a logical order. Like, I'll show you the next few that I have to do. So I'm on color three. It's going to be difficult to show. So let me pick up. And then this is four, five, and six. So clearly it's like in a fade. And so my plan of like picking a pattern where random colors will look good was kind of pointless, but it's still, it's still gonna look great. I think this might be my last year getting an advent calendar because I always stress out about like what projects I'm gonna do and how I'm gonna make the colors look good together. And like, I never know if the colors are gonna go together like this one or if they're gonna be random and I love opening them but the stress over the actual project is not enjoyable to me what I might do also is maybe I'll just make I've seen like ornament advent calendars where like every day is a different ornament pattern and I might do that because then the color shines by itself and it's something I can use. I think I will do that. Yeah, I think I'll do that. And if nobody I if nobody does one next year, I'll just pick one from a previous year and do that. Good idea me. So I will get an advent calendar next year. I usually ask for one for my birthday from my mom. So fun stuff. Really like this project. I believe all of the yarns are 75, 25, superwash merino, nylon. And, oh, and then on one of the days I got this progress keeper with T. It was, I think it was day three and the name of the color was T is at four. And I think what the way that she's doing it is, um, I think the first six days are the Hobbit. And then the next six days are the Fellowship of the Ring. And then the next six days are, I need to look it up. The Two Towers? I forget the names of these. I say that, I like act like I'm such a huge fan. I'm, I'm really not. Like I like the aesthetic, but I don't know a whole lot. Yeah, I was right. So I think the second six days will be the Fellowship of the Ring. The next six days will be the Two Towers. And the last one will be the Return of the King. Or, yeah, the last quarter. I think that's how she's doing it. Because all of the quotes so far, and I'm on day six, have been from The Hobbit. I've read The Hobbit. I'm currently reading the, the Lord of the Rings series. I'm not very far in it. The issue is it kind of reads like a textbook to me. <laughs> but I, I enjoy it. I just don't like doing it while I'm busy with other things. So I think the break will be a good time to read it. My next project is in this lovely project bag. It is by the Refugee Sewing Society. And my friend got it for me for my birthday last year from the Craftivist, which is a yarn store in Atlanta. I would check them out. They have an online shop and, you know, support local yarn shops. They have really cool stuff. The bag was sewn by a refugee. And I think the point is that they pay them fair wages. It was on the tag, which has since disintegrated and fallen off. So if you're doing the Skein Deer MCAL, the mid vint Deer MCAL, and you're not done with the second clue, look away. Here is one of my mittens. I'm knitting them two at a time, but not on the same needles. So I've done clue two on one of the mittens and on the other one I've just done clue one. And I've gone very festive with my colors and I really love this chart. I think that's so pretty and I'm really glad I did it in the red and the gray. It looks white, but it's like a very light gray. And then I love how the gusset for the thumb looks. And yeah, anyway, if you are 
doing the MCAL and you haven't done day two or clue two, you can look now. Um, so the, the yarn I'm using is Knit Picks Palette because this, this show is sponsored by Nick, Knit Picks. It is not. I just I use a lot of their yarn because it's very affordable. And these are the colors I'm using. My main color is Mist. This is very bright. My con my and then my contrast color one technically I think is tarragon and contrast color two is hollyberry, which is a very appropriate name. So I'm a little worried that the contrast on these two colors won't be good when they're in color work. Um, so if that happens, I might just do the color work in these colors and it might look weird because I think the way normally her MCALs are like one big picture, but like based on how the color work starts and ends, I think it's going to be like different panels or something. So it might look weird that they're all in the same colors, but it's okay. And yeah, so I, I'm really happy with this. I'm very pleased with how this yarn is doing with the color work. It is very smooth and very easy. Like it just works. I love that a lot. I did not expect that because so I've like heard people say the Nipix palette is like their answer to like things like Holst Super Soft or Jameson and Smith two ply jumper weight like stuff like that. And but it feels very different. Like it's a lot softer than those yarns. Like not to put a value judgment on it or anything it's just softer and it's a different price point and I don't know because it was softer even though it's non super wash I and I just didn't expect it to do color work well but it does it, it really does so if you're like in America and you don't want to pay for shipping to have like European color work yarns come here and for some reason you don't want to just shop at the woolly thistle you can get Knit Picks palette, and it's great. I mean, the Wooly Thistle doesn't have holes super soft. Also, I this is cheaper than Jamieson and Smith to ply jumper weight. Um, really enjoying these. This is only my second pair of Colorwork mittens ever, and this is going a lot better than the first pair went. My last whip is in this bag, which is part of my stash enhancement. I got it for my birthday. It is by SSK Yarners. And it has like, I'm trying to not make it blow out. I don't know why I think holding it far away will make it better. There, that's actually a lot better. Um, yeah, so it's like women in pretty dresses hanging up stuff on the Christmas tree. So, oh, now you can see my pajama pants. That's okay. I got, this is also part of Stash Enhancement. I treated myself to some nomadic yarns um, in the Letters to Santa colorway. And this is what it looks like. So on the picture, these colors are a lot more vibrant, but I got it on the yak base because I love I love how moody the yak base makes colors look and this is no exception. It is so moody, <laughs> I love it. And this is like, if, this is like my ideal Christmas color palette, like reds and golds. So yeah, um, I'm making a pair of socks and I'm making them toe up cause I got the 50 gram ball and I also got a con, it's not, con, it's coordinating because this is one of the colors in the stripe sequence, a coordinating mini to do heels, cuffs, and toes, which I don't normally do because it's expensive to get a coordinating mini for every sock yarn you have. But this time I splurged and so far I just have a toe. I'm knitting it toe up so I can knit it as long as I can and then move on to the next sock. Um, and I don't care if the stripes match or anything. I just I want to use as much of the yarn as possible. At this point, I have 56 stitches, which is what I normally do, but I think maybe this yarn might be a bit finer, so I'm going to increase two more, four more, 
and have 60 because I'm having a hard time getting it around. I was hoping to have these done by Christmas, but with all my Advent stuff, I don't think it's gonna happen. But I think that this is like not Christmassy to the point where it won't matter that I'm knitting them in January. So happy days. Um, oh, and I didn't say, I told you it was the yak base, but I didn't tell you what the fiber content is. It is 70% superwash merino, 20% yak, 10% nylon, and is 218 yards to 50 grams. And Nomadic Yarns is the best self-striping self yarn, in my opinion. I'm also a big fan of Desert Vista Dye Works because of her, like, striping, like, speckles with stuff. I know a lot of people do that, but I like her ver like I like her zombie line I haven't gotten any of them yet but I really like it I really want so she she had a bunch of Harry Potter colorways nomadic yarns and she's changing the names of them because of JK Rowling being bleh and but I really want the one that was previously Bellatrix Lestrange I don't think she has put that in the shop in a long time so I don't think she's renamed it yet but I really want that one on a sparkle base. So anyway, those are my Christmas socks. And finally, we'll do some spinning and then some stash and then I'm gonna end it because this is very long. So I finished this yarn. I showed the, I don't, I showed a bobbin of it last time. And um, I'm not the best at spinning, so don't judge me. I haven't calculated the yardage I don't really care what the yardage is because I know I have enough for what I need it for. I'm making the shift cowl by Andrea Mowry out of this and then I showed the other two yarns last time and I haven't started it yet so you'll see all of them when I start it. Um, I was aiming for a sport on all of them but this has turned out to be like lace to sport at different points. Close enough, right? I really like how I did the colors. So the way it is, is like, it's, it starts out with the green and it's just a green by itself. And then it kind of does some bits with green and red twisted together. And then it goes to the right. It kind of fades is really what's happening. So I think this is very pretty and I love it. And the fiber is by Alaskan Yarn Company. And I got this while I was visiting Alaska and I went to Aurora Yarns in Skagway. And that is one of my favorite yarn shops ever. So if you're ever in Skagway for some reason, go to go there. They have like really interesting yarn, like stuff, stuff you don't find everywhere. And then also it's like a lot of local stuff. And I, because of like shipping, you don't really get stuff from Alaskan dyers very much in like yarn shops in the continental United States, you do not get a lot of Alaskan because it, it costs a lot of money to ship from Alaska because a lot of people live on islands or in like really remote places without airports. So it was very nice to be there and I got a bunch of Alaskan yarn and fiber. So that was last year. And yeah, that's that. So now we're getting into my birthday stash because I had a birthday and I got spoiled. So the first thing, this isn't the first thing I got, but I'm just going to show it in order of accessibility. I got the Colorwork Bible by Jesse Oster Miller. And I got this because a lot, so Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits and Skein Deer reviewed it or talked about it. And I really liked the idea of it because I really like color work and I think I struggle a bit with some of the techniques so it this talks about picking colors and like all the different color work techniques including stripes stranded slip stitch and mosaic intarsia double knitting brioche and it has some patterns too and it's just like a really good reference book but it's also not huge but I've heard that even though it's not like a big book, it has like very, very good reference information. So I'm very excited to use this. 
And then there's one pattern in the book. I didn't get the book for the patterns, but there is one that I really, really like. Um, and it is the spark sweater. I think that's beautiful. And I think I want to make like a holiday version of this. I want, I want to do it in the same kind of like a hand dyed and I mean, I think they're both hand dyed. I, I want to do it in a hand dyed, like sort of variegated speckle thing, but have it in holiday colors. I'm thinking like very simple, like red and white, but like a, ooh, I'm thinking maybe like a pinky, like maybe something that looks like peppermint bark, but like darker and then, or no. Maybe for the lighter color, do something that's like peppermint bark-esque, and then for the darker color, do like a burgundy. When I say peppermint bark, I have I have one pair of socks I'm thinking of specifically where it's like light pinks, and then some some I feel like would probably have like a mint green and then like brown speckles, and then like a burgundy would look good with that. I don't know. That's like very far, like years into the future, but I would love to make that. So this is a cool book. I haven't read through all of it yet because I got it yesterday. I'm very excited. The other, I'm gonna do the yarn and then I'll do the equipment that I got. One yarny thing I got was, uh, this is Farmer's Daughter Mighty Mo, which is 70% kid mohair, 30% silk, 459 yards to 50 grams and the color is elk antler and it's like this it's like this I don't know like taupe I would say it's taupe I was gifted it to I'm I want to make a daydreamer by Andrea Mowry sorry I'm trying to put this label back on the yarn. I got three skeins of this, but I'm only showing one because there's no point in showing all three. I want to make a Daydreamer by Andrea Mowry and I bought the like non mohair yarn and this is Regia Merino Yak 4 ply and it's 58% wool, 28% polyamide, 14% yak and it, it's like this beautiful like heathered. I got it in the beige something colorway but I got, I think these two will look really good together. They're not exactly the same, but I think this slight variation will make it look really interesting. So I'm very excited about that. The next thing I got, it came with my bag and it'll be obvious that it came with my bag when you see it. I got this um, sock blank from SSK Yarners and it has like, the dress and the Christmas tree and some presents. And I love sock blanks like this. It is a double stranded sock blank and I've never used one of those before. So I don't know how I'm gonna go about it, but I am excited. They'll be my Christmas socks next year, I think. Oh, I didn't notice that. It has a little thing that tells you where to start. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, I'm really excited to make these socks and it's an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. I cannot find the, the label immediately, but it, I'm sure it's in the realm of like 400 yards. This is fun. And then my last yarn stash thing is I got six skeins of this. It is BC Garn Bio Shetland and it is 100% pure organic wool and it's GOTS certified. And I've always wanted to try this yarn. I don't know why. <laughs> I just saw it and I was like, I want to try that. And it's in the Oxford colorway. I'll show you the label. Yeah, so it's like a, it looks kind of blue in this light, but it's like an, a dark charcoal gray. And I'm gonna make a Magnolia by Hoki Locatelli in this because one time from Goodwill, I got a cashmere sweater cardigan in this color and it's like in roughly the same shape as the Magnolia. 
and I cannot find it anymore. And I use, I wore it all the time to like sort of dress up t-shirts essentially, like dress up t-shirts and jeans. I would wear like the sweater and then like a scarf or something. So I want to replace that sweater with this. And it took me a really long time to figure out which cardigan I wanted to make. But the issue was in her pattern picture, I didn't like how it looked. But then I looked at other people's projects and it was like exactly what I wanted. So whatever, I have six skeins of this. Oh, and the yardage is crazy. It's it's comparable to like whole super soft in terms of yardage. I keep talking about that yarn. It is 280 meters per 50 grams, but I think it was like 300 something yards. So very nice. I think this will bloom really nicely upon blocking. And I love the color. So yeah, that's my yarn stash enhancement. And then my last one is very exciting. <laughs> I got the Chowgu interchangeable needle set. These are all gifts, by the way. I did not buy all these for myself. And I'm very excited. I love the case. I love the aesthetic, but also I love Chowgu needles. So I, I, I say used to, I still have it. I have a Haya Haya, inter, Haya Haya Sharp interchangeable set. And I really liked it at first. However, I've had issues with the wrapping on the screws on a lot of the needles like getting worn out so they don't fully screw in even if I use the rubber thing and the T the T the key that comes with it. I've also had issues I had one of my one of my cords, the connector just like ripped open, like the metal part where the hole is for the T-pin just like broke while I was trying, or uh, my boyfriend was trying to put a needle on it. I don't think that they're bad. I think, I still like them, but I tried, I didn't want to buy, so these are a bit pricier than the Haya Haya ones. I didn't want to buy them unless I knew I really wanted them. So I got some that are fixed circulars and I feel like the t the feeling of the metal and the cord is more ergonomic for me. The noise is less good. I The noise of the high high is, you know what I mean, like the metal rubbing against each other noise is better on the high high is than this, but ergonomics is a bit more important. And I got the four, the four inch set um, because it came with hat cords. However, I think I want to eventually, or that's what I wanted, I didn't, yeah. I want, I wonder if they have, so I know for the high higher ones, they have like a extender that makes it five inches. So I'm wondering if they have that for this. There's only been a few projects that, where I felt like I needed a five inch tip. Most of them four inches is fine because my hands are really small but on occasion when a project gets really big it's the four the extra inch kind of makes it support itself better it, or really it's an extra two inches I don't know if that makes sense <laughs> just like sweaters and like big shawls when they get really big it's hard to hold them up with the four inch needles like not noticeably for me, maybe I'm just weak. So I also got a gleaner and I forgot to bring it in here, but I'm very excited about that. This sweater is getting a little pilly, like on the, yeah, on the underarms cause I wear it all the time. And I have a bunch of older sweaters that I've had for year, years, like two or three years. I haven't been knitting that long that are pilly and I'm very excited to glean all of my sweaters. I haven't done it yet, but I'm very excited to do it. So that's all my stash. What else is happening? I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about like personal stuff. One, because my life is boring. Two, I've been rattling on forever. <laughs> yeah, in terms of life stuff, I finished 
the second book in the the ember in the ashes i finished the second book and i got the third book for my birthday so i'm looking forward to reading that someone told me i need to read animal farm because i never read it in school so i guess I think the year that I was supposed to read it, I was in like a different English class from everyone for some reason, and we did not read the normal English class books. We read like really random weird stuff. Um, so I just never read it. So someone told me I need to read it and I'll really like it. So I downloaded it on my Kindle app and we'll be reading that. And then I also want to spend, so I think I'm gonna read that first, and then I'm going to spend the break after my finals reading The Lord of the Rings. I don't think I'll finish it, but I will probably make a sizable dent before school starts. And then the last, so, and then as for like TV and stuff, I've been, we've been watching Doctor Who pretty religiously that's pretty much it. We sort of went off all of our other shows we were watching. One, because Bake Off finished. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited because the guy who won, Peter, he's so cute. I love him. We went to school together. <laughs> I don't know if we were there at the same time, but I went to Edinburgh for a year and that's where he goes. We might have been there at the same time because I think he's 20 and I think in Scotland you can start college a year earlier. So if he did that, we were probably there at the same time. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Um, I'm really glad he won. He was one of my favorites. My absolute favorite from the beginning was Scottish Mark. I guess I have a thing for Scottish people, but he got eliminated in the Japan week, even though his cake was so cute with the avocados. It was so cute. I'm so bummed. He it didn't taste good. I'm so bummed. But yeah, Peter was my next favorite, so I'm glad he won. And that's it for life stuff, I guess. I mean, I had my birthday, but it wasn't all that exciting. I just got dinner with my mom. So that's it. Thanks for watching if you got this far. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you enjoy your knitting. I hope you're not knitting gifts. I hope you're knitting fun Christmas stuff for yourself. Do that. That is fun. Uh, and goodbye.